Hi, I'm Barbara Fox. Today I thought I'd talk about TILFA. So TILFA is Topology Independent Loop Free Alternate, which is fast reroute for segment routing. So this is really the next generation of fast reroute. So I thought really let's touch on the MPLS fast reroute again. We talked about that in the MPLS segment routing video. We'll see how TILFA differs from previous version of fast reroute. So this is the network that we're going to look at. There's a key here that shows what the metrics are. Green links have a metric of one, blue 100, and the orange have a metric of 5,000. What happens uh, in the in, when you're running an IGP in the network, ISIS or OSPF, is that every node knows the shortest path to every other node. But if there's a break in the network, if there's a fault in the network, we have to wait for the IGP to reconverge so that all the nodes learn about the break. And that can take considerable amount of time. What we want to be able to do is recover from the break in less than 50 milliseconds. And to that end, we've got these fast reroute uh, algorithms that we use. So for MPLS, we'll set up a tunnel that is going from the source to the destination. So the tunnel is going to go from P4 to P9. And it's represented by this green tunnel. So if there's a break in the link, there's a break in the tunnel. And we need to be able to route around that break so the tunnel can continue. Now, for we have two types of protection. We have link protection and link node protection. So in link protection, we would route around the error in this link and go to the next node. Now, we are going to go through this P3 node from P4 to P3 to P5, even though the metrics are much higher than if we went to P1, because if P1 went to P5, it would turn right around and come try to go to P5 this way. So we have to go this way to get to uh, avoid this break in the network. And if we were doing link node, we would, instead of going to the next top, we would go to the next tops, next top, which would be P6. And so we would route around from P4 to P3 to P2 to P6. And in that case, our metric would be 15,000 just for this segment here. So after the IGP reconverges, then this network, this tunnel is going to be set up again from P4 to P9. And so it will route on the shortest path, which would be P1 to P2 to P3 to P6 to P9. In this case, we've had to wait for the IGP for the tunnel to be reestablished. We create the new, the new tunnel and then get rid of the old tunnel. It takes a little while to get on the best path. So for TILFA, what in segment routing, what they wanted to do is make it so that instead of waiting for the IGP to reconverge, we want to go to the, the path that the IGP would use in the event that it had already reconverged. So that's what TILFA is doing. So again, we've got the same network. And in segment routing they, and TILFA, they talk about the P space and the Q space. And we'll see what these are. But basically what it is, is it's as far as you can get in the P space from the source. And then in the Q space, it's how you get to the destination from the node. And what we're trying to do is find a path that matches up the P to the Q. So in this case, if we're in segment routing, we're going from P4 again to P9. And so we're going to send all the packets with a header of a label of 16,009 right, to get to P9. And so this is going to take the shortest path, which is 102 running along this link. Now, if there's a break again on the link between P4 and P5, the first thing that we're going to do is figure out what the Q space is. And what the Q space is, is all the nodes that can reach P9 where their shortest path does not cross the broken link. So in this case, P4 is protecting this link. So it's going to figure out what the best path is if it has to protect this link for all traffic destined to P9. So it's, very, it's looking up a very specific fault scenario to route around a very specific fault to a, to a specific destination. The first thing we're going to do is say, OK, which nodes on their shortest path go to P9 without traversing this link? So P6 would do that. P3 would go with a value of 2. P2 with a value of 3, because if 
P2 went this way, the metrics would be much higher, P5. Now P1, this would be 100, 101, 102, 103. And this way it would be 1, 101, 102, 103. So in that case, there's two paths that are equal cost paths from P1 to P9. That means that P1 would probably send half the traffic in one direction and half the traffic in the other direction, which means that P1 is not a Q node because it does use this broken link. So it, it is not a Q node. So we figured out the Q nodes for this path. The next thing we want to figure out are the P nodes. And what the P nodes are, are the nodes that P4 reaches on its shortest path without traversing this link. So P1, obviously, and P2. Oh, and P3 is not because it's 1, 101, 102. This is 100, 101, 102. So from P4 to P3, there are two equal cost paths. And so it's not a P node. So now we have our P nodes and we have our Q nodes. And this is the intersecting node. So this node is both in the P space and the Q space. So the shortest path to get to P2 from P4 doesn't go through the bad link and the shortest path from P2 to P9 doesn't go through the bad link. And so instead of sending the traffic this way, P4 is gonna forward the traffic towards P1 with the label of 16,002 saying, go to P2 first and then that label will be popped and then go to P9. So we've routed around the error. In this example, we, we don't need to use the extended P space, but just to cover what the extended P space is, if P4 can't find you know, a node that's in the PQ space, it can look to its neighbors to figure out what their P space is. So in this case, P1's P space would be P2 and P3. It wouldn't be P6 because that there's an equal cost path from P1 to P6 this way and an equal cost path to P1 to P6 this way. So P3 would be in P1's Q space, uh, P space. So it would be in the Q space and the P space. So say P2 wasn't in the Q space. P4 would forward the traffic with a label of 16,003, 16,009. It would forward it to P1 and P1 would look at shortest path would go to P3 and then it would go to P9. Because the source knows which interface it's going to forward the traffic on, it can use its neighbor's P space to figure out the shortest path. Uh, in this case, I've changed the metrics of the P node links so that every link has a value of one, except that I'm actually going to change uh, the link between P2 and P3 to have a metric of four. Okay, and this is just to show another example of how the PQ space works. So in, again, we're sending traffic from P4 to P9. So we forward the traffic. We have a break in the link. Now we have to figure out the Q space again. P6 is in the Q space, P3. But P2, this would be four, five, six. And in this case, it would be one, two, three, four, five. So P2 is not in the Q space. It's shortest path to P9 is actually through the broken link. So it's not in the Q space. So now we figure out the P space. And again, P1 is in the P space, P2 is in the P space, and P3 is not because uh, this would be one, two, six, and this is one, two, three. So a P3 is not in the, in the P space. So now let's look at the extended P space. So P1, this is five. This is one, two, three, four. So P3 is not in the extended P space either for P1. So in this case, our P space and our Q space do not intersect. We don't have a PQ node. So what we want to do is we want to go to P2, and then we want to traverse to P3, and then go from P3 to P9, right? Because that's the way we can get there without traversing the, the broken link. We do that. We say, okay, I'm going to go to, first I'm going to go to P2, then I'm going to go to P3, and I'm going to go to P9. So I've, I've pushed two paths. And I pushed the node label for P3 because this is four. And if we wanted to get to P3 any the other way, it would be one, two, three, four, five. So this is the shortest path from P2 to P3. So I can push the node label of P3. 
But say instead of changing the metric to four, I had changed the metric to five. Now, when I do the, when I try to figure out how I'm going to go from P2 to P3, I could go this way with a metric of five, or I could go one, two, three, four, five, no, five. Okay, so from P2 to P3, it's either five this way or one, two, three, four, five this way. So it's a, an equal cost path. In that case, I can't just say go to P3. I have to say use this link to go to P3. And so instead of using a node SID to get to P3, I'm using an adjacency SID, which is telling it which link to use. Now, in the end, if you know, if we were to if we were to try to reconverge with this error in the network, we would this is the path that we would take. We're not routing around any other paths. So what TILFA is doing is by using this PQ space, it's picking the least cost path. Now, in this case, I did it with least cost path. Uh, you might do it with, you might use another algorithm, say that you are balancing your network for traffic, the amount of bandwidth that's in use on your network. You were doing um, traffic engineering. In that case, when you figured out your P space and your Q space, you'd use the traffic engineering rules that you use to determine the path to figure out your P space and your Q space, but it's easiest to show it going with least cost path. So I hope this was helpful and uh, thanks for your attention. Take care.